Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and explain something to you. Now, you guys know about this channel. You know, I always expose the truth on shit. Kodak Black. Boy, you was nowhere near the category of a Tupac and Biggie. You're not lyricists. You don't tell stories. You sound like shit. The quality of your music sounds like diarrhea. You don't talk about nothing. Can't understand a word you say. And you saying no one lived they raps back then? I'm going to tell you something. And those that are listening that are part of this generation that don't know no better. See, there was a time in an era, right? When hip-hop started. Now, the sound of hip-hop came from Jamaica. It originated from Jamaica in the late 70s. A Jamaican DJ came here to the U.S. to bring that sound and then originated in the Bronx of the projects. Alright? Same thing with dance. The dance moves that we did back then and now, a lot of that stuff is... Alright, I want you to pay attention to what I'm telling you here. A lot of that is originated from Jamaica and African culture. Now, go a bit more into it, right? If you came up rapping about... Okay, let me put it like this. There was a category once where we didn't idolize wanting to sell drugs. Where we didn't idolize wanting to be a gang member. Where we didn't idolize doing drugs. It was good, clean hip-hop. However, if you came up saying that, oh, you're the best lyricist and the best freestylist, you had to back that up. And if you didn't, then you go ahead and you stop doing music. Now, by the time gangster rap came around, if you were rapping about gang banging, being part of a gang, along with selling drugs, you had to, you ended up getting a background check from you from the streets. And if it turned out that you were good, if your word was cleared by anybody that could back you up, all right, then you could go off and still do your thing. But if it turned out if it wasn't true, then your music car is going to get pulled all together. That means no more music. That means you shut down all together. Now, if you came up rapping about selling drugs, right? And if you was selling drugs, if you had somebody that could, you know, vouch for you, then, all right, you you good to go. But if you wasn't, then you need to go ahead and stop rapping. So the problem is, with you, Kodak Black, and the rest of you other new rappers who ain't even really rapping, more like melody, which is pretty much in the category of singing... You guys idolize about doing drugs, getting high, shooting up, dabbing up. And the problem is, that kind of shit comes from down south because we don't have no heroes down here in the south. So we're going to idolize about the crackhead. We're going to idolize about being the crackhead. So, because of that, you saying that no one lived their raps back then? If you were saying... The shit that you were saying in music, you had to be living it. You had to show it. You had to be about it. And especially when you're by yourself or with your posse, you're going to get tested. And you had to back that up. Biggie was a street hustler, but he also had his fair share, fair share of shootouts. Biggie was a lyricist.
but he wasn't a gangster. Tupac, he was influenced by the gangster lifestyle. He wasn't a gangster. He fell into that lifestyle after he got famous. That's been proven and shared about so many times about the people that was around him. Now, going in on that, Tupac had his fair share of getting in the fights and being in shootouts with actual police and then rapping about it. So he had to prove his. He had to prove his. Now, along with that, same thing with Easy E. You know, Easy was a crip. So he had to back his up. He had to uh, prove what he was about. And when they got famous, they still had to back up their words. Sadly, it's still, sadly thing is, when you get to a certain level and you get caught up in that mess, you shouldn't be doing it anyways, man. Because you got yourself in a position where you can take care of your family. And problem is, we decided to still stay to the streets. And that's what ended up getting everyone killed. Same thing with DJ Jam Master J. He was a hustler. He kept it in the hood too much. And because of that, the hood ended up turning on him and killing him. But the thing is, with you, Kodak Black, and a lot of these other new artists coming up, you guys got called out on so many levels about the gangbanging shit. You claiming you folk, and you claiming you GD, but you out there cross-jumping, and then trying to claim other gangs? Don't you know cross-jumping is a violation of the street code? Especially to the gang culture, the gang life? You can get killed for that shit. They don't care if you're famous. They don't care who you fucking. Nah. Sad thing is, we let that kind of shit nowadays slide. Because we too stupid and blind and arrogant. You claiming you GD, but you out here claiming you Vice Lord. That don't make no fucking sense. You out here saying that you banging and that you out here hustling and busting. But thing is, you ain't this shit. Because you ain't no gangster, man. You ain't from them streets, bro. Same thing with Offset and Amigos. They claiming they, uh... GD and Rolling 60 because they wearing the uh, Star David with the rings with the 5.6 point stars but they out here throwing up bloods that don't make no sense that's cross jumping to the fullest but the problem is that's that down south shit because that's all that ever happens down here in the south is a bunch of cross jumping and no one does anything about it fall into that bust the ass lifestyle category and Kodak there's a reason why your ass didn't go do a much amount of time as you did because you out there ran your mouth yeah and those like people like you are known to fucking snitch real fucking talk cause you wanna and you you also gonna be the type to set up your homie your friends Kind of like that one rapper. You know, the evidence is there. The only time you get somebody tattooed on your on your body when they alive, even with a teardrop, and I've seen this before, is when you are getting ready to kill them out of jealousy and also out of fear because they may know something and have something on you that you don't want getting out something that they can use against you later on just like I explained the shit with Boosie he ain't a real gangster he ain't from them shits Boosie a whole rat out here there's a reason why he lives up in New York now and why he can't come back down to Louisiana now if you guys want to know more about that alright then I'll break it down to you because Kodak you, you fit in right into the same category Boosie, all right, he, he, he a good storyteller, but he ain't the best lyricist. Now, he ain't really from them streets. When he got put on by Webby, because 
Webby, he owns Trill Entertainment. So Boosie is Webby's artist. Right? Soon as he got put on, he fell into that street lifestyle. He wanted to represent something he was not about. Well, that shit caught up to him. And get look what ended up happening. Because when Boosie was locked up for child support, he had his friend Little Pat murdered and killed. That was proven and came out by the streets and then also came out into the court system. I know because some of the people that I'm connected with down there in Huntsville, Alabama were connected to some of Boosie's people, which also tr led back to here in the state of Tennessee. Well, Boosie tried saying, oh, well, Pat's father got his own son killed. Why would you get your own son killed? Boosie got Pat killed because Boosie was jealous. Well, once he got found guilty of murder, he was supposed to do a longer life sentence. But you know what ended up happening? He ended up snitching from people from Louisiana, Huntsville, Alabama, all the way to Nashville, Tennessee. By the time he came out, he had to, he had to pay a lot of money in order just to go through certain areas to get where he needed to be at. Because in the end, it was proven that he just was not about that lifestyle. Now, with all that being said, goes right back into the music because all this began with the music. You are nowhere near Tupac and Biggie and the Easy E, let alone a 50 Cent. Okay, people who proved themselves and ended up getting, ended up dying or getting shot, but living because of it, they proved they gangster. Me, I had to prove mine every fucking damn day. Why I'm out here in these streets and how I was and used to be. But you know what? I grew from that. And there's always a way out of it. And people did vouch for me. So I earned my stripes. But the thing is, Cole Black, you ain't, own, you ain't earned yours, man. You a whole uneducated coon-ass crackhead. Because that's what you is. And you saying you like Tupac and Biggie but better than them? Bro, you never in your life sold out arenas. You will never in your life never sold as much albums like they did in the short amount of time. You have never been in much movies like Tupac has in his short amount of time. So don't claim yourself to Biggie or Tupac. Don't claim yourself to 50 Cent. Because 50 Cent really built like that. And he'll tell you. No, what you need to do, you need to stay in your lane and be part of the bum-ass crackheads that you hang around. Because all that fuckery shit you doing, saying, that ain't my drugs, that ain't my guns. Well, guess what? A good majority of people in the hood can't go out and get guns like that all the time off on the block. Or can't buy that much amount of drugs. So, guess who is the uh, supply for that? You! And the only reason why you said the shit that you said in court, because your little bitch ass was too fucking afraid to go and do time and take yours like a real man, so you ended up running your mouth. So you have nothing in common with the OGs of the past. Nothing in fucking common with the OGs of the past. At all. And the only person that, the only two couple of people I can really think of in the South who really backed up theirs was UGK and Master P. Now, I don't really care much for Master P's music, but I respect him as a businessman. But Master P really had to be about his. And he had to show that shit. Same thing with UGK. They had to be about theirs. So you ain't nowhere near their category. You don't even come close to the salt on their shoes, but You dirt. So, the only thing that you really care about is about chasing a hoe. And blowing all your money on these on these little thoughts out here. Hey, you so goddamn fucking desperate. You trying to fuck a whole man dyke. Who was young M.A. A whole man dyke. She don't want you. She, uh, she, she looks like she can beat you up. But here's the thing. The, 
the stats, the proof, the stories, the history, the numbers, the money, it's all there why you'll never be up on a Biggie or Tupac's level. You've been in the game how long? Three years? And mostly all your career is known for being locked up, but getting out early, and I wonder why that is. I mean, I took mine like a fucking man. Because that's what you're going to have to be. Now, I'm like, almost, I got two more, actually one more year before I'm 30 years old. So I come from a different era. Plus, I'm a New Yorker at heart. And I'm originally from up north, even though I've been down in the south since I was like three, four years old. At the early, early years of the 90s, when it first started rolling in. So yeah, I know what I'm talking about. So if all that being said, Kodak, you'll never be another Tupac in a biggie. And that's one thing this generation has to stop doing. You need to stop claiming that, oh, I'm like a Tupac in biggie. You weren't even around or even born. Hell, yeah, it's probably wasn't even a sperm cell yet. And your daddy's not sick when the boys died. You didn't come till in the very late 90s. Might as well say early 2000s. Because that's when you were born. Hell, you, you better off hauling at somebody like Bad Baby. Now, don't say she under age. She's been out for almost, what, five years now. You know she... The only reason why they say not she's under age is because they want to protect her age and her look. No, she's at the age of 18 now. She's 18 going on 19 at the most. So she's at age to be fucked. So don't get it twisted. And that's one thing about this rap game, man. It, they like to lie about people's ages to make them still seem younger so people can gravitate towards them to our younger audience. But it doesn't always work because you know, you have to be as good as you can last and you have to keep that mentality. But if you have somebody out here that really knows math, then it's going to then it's going to come out like oh well this person is really lying about the age and again you know bad baby is a good example of that she 18 years old she is now an adult she is illegal hey is she going on 19 so i would fuck her too so i can see why you have somebody like 69 or trippy red who will, who wants to fuck her cuz she's out there really showing off her tits and her ass being a hoe and getting fucked behind the scenes because she's at age. But you don't hear her claiming that she's one of these, um, you don't hear her claiming that she's one of the best, like these, like some of the older female audiences that came out during the 80s and 90s and early 2000s and all because she doesn't come anywhere close to them. But you, Kodak, well, you were really out there with it. But don't come claiming some shit, bro, if you can't back it up. Because you don't come anywhere near that level. Can anybody name one mixtape from you? Can anybody name one album from you? Can anybody name one verse from you? Can anybody name one song from you? Can anybody remember a show of yours? No. No. So, this is me addressing Kodak and just spitting straight fucking facts. You gotta stop doing. You gotta stop letting people gas you up, build you up. Because there are levels to it. There's a level that, you know, when you let people gas you up so much to let them build you up, that is getting to your head. Because they doing that to a higher level to for your downfall and this is the problem with you okay let's start with your homies first right the shit you got locked up for you were letting the wrong people around you you were letting them gas you up and build you up so much to give you an, an overflated ego to make you think like you were really this great person this great lyricist and then when the time came they wanted to see you fall because they wanted you out the picture so they can get some money. See what I'm saying? Now, I like DJ Academics. I like watching Everyday Struggle. But you really let them, if you ask me the most, really 
gas you up and build you up so much that you're saying shit like this. And they don't even fuck with you like that. Yeah, so there is a level of being too hyped up and too gassed up, which is a bad thing. And that's exactly what it is that's happening to you. You're letting too many people hype you up and gas you up. And that right there can be your own demise, your own downfall. So you need to think about that.